agree. That's a Friday treat, an apple pie. Ooh. Yes, I know it's unhealthy. I also don't care. Well, it's delicious. It is delicious, and that's what matters. It's, exactly. it's sugary goodness. <laughs> Contrary to what the viewers at home might be thinking, I can assure you we do actually do work. It just so happens that we're having lunch at the moment. Fucking hell. So they build 250 a day for an engineer? Yep. Fuck, really? Just for the engineer to be there. So if you've got six engines, like, we, we had a site we were doing, big That's office. quite a clever way of doing it, actually. Because normally, I've always struggled with when people ring you up, because I get people asking, well, how much do you charge for it? I've got the pad tester in the back. Mm. How much do you charge for it? And normally, they'll say the way that I do it is I charge a call-out fee. Yeah. I charge a minimum call-out fee of £100. It's not, it, even if you go out to test a dozen items, it's not fucking worth it. You've got to... No, exactly. And to buy the stickers and stuff. The stickers are expensive. They're not yeah, cheap stickers. they're you know? really expensive. <laughs> People don't see any of that shit, you know? So I've always just said, well, look, yeah, I mean, even doesn't matter how few items you've got, you know? There's I've a basic... A bill, I've got a bill of minimum sort of 80, 100 quid. Yeah. It's not worth me doing it otherwise. Yeah, it's not worth the time. <gasps> This, you can hear him start hyperventilating on the other end of the telephone. Yeah, no one does pad testing correctly. Oh God, no! I've, 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 seen, I've, I've seen people go on sites. <laughs> literally, they go onto the sites, pull their stickers past, out. Past, they're like that. Yeah. They look at that. <laughs> yeah. Like Everyone that. Looking that past. Yeah, visual only. Past. Yeah, visual only. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's go and earn some more money. There are two. No, it's all right. Oh, fun. There's, there's one in Camden somewhere. We'll find one. Camden is a bit. <laughs> you can't say that on YouTube. Cut that bit out. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we're here over at, uh, I'm doing this uh, rewire over in Royal Oak. Um, I'll leave, the, this is the second fix now, and I'm gonna leave the first part, um, I'll leave a link to the first part of the video up here. It'll be in one of these, one of these corners somewhere up here. Um, so we're doing the second fix now, it's going all right. Um, I've got Tom here, he's now, he's now a fully fledged member of the Thomas Nagy group. Uh, and it's going well. I'll pan around and you can have a look at and see what we've done. So we just cut all the back boxes in. Um, the customers actually put their own data cables in uh, while we've been gone, so they're dealing with that separately. Um, but they're going in. Um, same again over here. So we've got the sockets, light switches we're cutting in now. Same again. There's these ones over here. Are, they're putting a... They're, there's a worktop, I think, going underneath. So these ones are a little bit higher than... Uh, than all the rest of them, but they're deliberately high for that reason. A couple of you were asking in my, uh, when I was doing the first fix here, I mentioned that the, um, the fan isolator switch is going down low here. Um, and the reason for that is because they've got full height doors going in. So these doors are coming out and there's great there's big floor to ceiling doors going in. So we just decided rather than put the switch up there, it just made more sense to put it down here next to the socket and they, they can isolate it if they want to isolate the fan. It's down here instead. Uh, so that was the only reason. It wasn't a particular, you know, there wasn't a particular sort of design reason. It just, it kind of works better down here. This is actually a switch Tommy's just connected, actually. Pretty neat job as well, if I don't mind saying so myself. So we're not going to get all the all the second fixing done here today. This is going to take us probably another two or three days to get this all done. Our biggest priority at the moment is we need to cut the lights in on this ceiling. So, because the customer's got some furniture, they want to move back into this room. So we're going to cut the lights out now. Um, and then once we've done that, that'll probably take us to the end of today. And then we'll come back. I think our next day here is Tuesday. So let's get it on. What you can do, a good little tip, if you're doing things like fitting down lights, especially in a painted ceiling like this, where it's a fully finished ceiling, Rather than using a traditional tape measure, if you, you know, where you would traditionally have to pull your tape measure out and then it would, you know, it snaps under its own weight and all that stuff. Um, and it's also, you get marks on the ceiling if you do it that way. Like you've got a nice, beautifully white painted ceiling here. A good way to get around that is to use one of these. Um, and this is just a little laser distance measuring tool. And these are fantastic little bits of kit because you can literally just point it at what you want, press the button twice, and it just gives you a measurement. So these are, incredibly good for doing things like this where you want a really accurate fast measurement um, so a very good tip to know if you're fitting down lights and stuff these are an invaluable tool i'd recommend anyone to get one of these they're brilliant bits of kit okay so now our down lights we've measured out the positions of the down lights as you saw us doing uh, so now i've got to cut them out um, i prefer to take longer i'm very much a believer when it comes to cutting out down lights because we've all made mistakes we've all been there 
um, and, you know, on jobs, I, you know, in my earlier years when I was a spark, um, you do make mistakes where you're in a hurry and you've mismeasured it, you've cut it. And of course, if it's a nice new ceiling like this, you know, it's, it's game over. So you've only got one shot at getting it right. So it's very much a question of measure twice, cut once, okay? Um, which is why I use that little distance measure you saw, because it gives you a really accurate measurement. Um, now, once you've got to, when you've got to cut the actual lights in, I tend to use, you've seen this already, this is the silicon cup, which you see me use, and I've got the Bosch Progressor hole saws. Um, generally, I tend to find, if you're cutting into plasterboard, the best way I've found of doing it is to just, uh, once the bit catches into the ceiling, I tend to drive slowly, just enough to, for the, for the teeth to bite into the plaster, and once it's got a, once it's caught a ring, and I, think I can then s speed it up nice and quickly and just keep a very light pressure and just let the teeth of the, the bit actually do the work because you don't really need to put any pressure behind it. It's such light plaster. You should just be able to cut nice and gently without any real pressure at all. So let's cut these in and uh, hopefully my wires are in the right place. <laughs> Right, so the downlights in here are all done now. So for the time being, all we're going to do is we're just going to leave them hanging out the ceiling for a second. I mean, we popped some of them back in like that, but if they want to do another coat of paint or anything, they can do. Um, that's the end result, um, and they're really they're neat little fittings. I quite what I quite like about these is they've got the double clamp bar. A lot of downlights, you've really got to squeeze tight to try and fit in to twin and earth. But this one's got a nice big open clamping system you can really get you can, it's a nice easy fitting to use and it's all push connectors which makes them a doddle to use the earth terminal is a bit fiddly on it but other than that they're um, a very very good light they're really impressive so there you go boys and girls so we're going to head off to the next job and uh, we'll see you in a bit all right everybody so we are back we're back in Bellside park doing this uh, little fit out here and it's going well they've now plastered all of the ceiling and the walls and everything as you can see it's looking nice it's funny how much it comes together, a job comes together once, you know, once the walls and everything are plastered. The difference it makes is incredible, just what a com sort of a complete look it gives. And obviously once it's painted, I mean, it just looks like a finished job, but it's, it's come together really nicely. So the sockets are all now in, as you can see, and there's 14 of them dotted all the way around. Uh, and then moving through here, my partner in crime is now here. He's hey now guys. back. That reminds me actually, um, a lot of you are asking what's happening with this old cabling here. Um, is this being taken out? Is it staying? Is it going? Uh, the answer is yes, it will be going, but it's just uh, at the second, uh, we still need some of the power for various other applications. Um, for there's, there's the lighting downstairs, which is still switched on. Um, and this, the fire alarm power supply is, is one of these. I don't know which one it is yet, but we've got to cut that out when we move the fuse board up into the communal hallway, which is just through there. So. That's the reason that I've chosen not to cut this out, but it will come out um, because um, this will all get weighed in. Which does remind me, actually, uh, that takes me on to my next question. Some of you are asking what happens with, uh, when you do take, when you cut cable out, do you just throw it away? Do you weigh it in? Generally, if it's like, um, I don't know, if it's a house through wire, something like that, I generally tend not to bother weighing cable in because you don't get that much for it anymore. Um, it, we certainly haven't got the space to keep it. You can't keep it and stockpile it because I just, I haven't got the space. So, but here, there's actually quite a lot of slack. So we can, we can just cut all of this out. We'll put, we'll chuck it in a corner and at the end of the job, we can just go and weigh this all in. So I'll let you know how much it comes to actually when I, uh, when I take it down to the scrapyard in Wembley, I'll let you know what it is they, uh, what they pay for it. And then just going back in here, as we saw, I've, um, this is where we left off last time. The extractor fan is in. Uh, there are a couple of you saying, where's the isolator switch for the fan? It's down here. Um, the reason I put it down here is because they specifically requested they didn't want a switch high up. So I've just, all that will happen is we'll put a, there'll be a dual face plate here and we'll have the light switch and then there'll be the three pole isolator. That's the word I was hunting for. There'll be a three pole isolator there for the extractor fan. I've actually been elsewhere today, but Dave's been here doing some other, <laughs> Dave, Dave, we're, we're calling Dave now. That's his new name, Dave. <laughs> Because um, Tom is just too complex. Now, we, the estate agents next door don't understand either. It's getting a bit silly. So he, he, we're calling him Dave now. That's it. Um, but anyway, um, Dave, Tom, whatever you want to call him, he's been here today. He's been running the wiring into the kitchen. Um, so all the water pipes and stuff down here, as you can see, there's no central heating here. So we haven't got to worry about central heating pipes and stuff. We've just got a cold water main coming in. 
But all of this here in the corner is being boxed up. Um, and all we'll do, these, these units will all go in and there's going to be a sink, I don't know, somewhere-ish here with an electric um, hand wash next to it. So we've run the cables, or I should say like Dave's run the cables in for that, so they're down there. We'll leave them there for the second because we're not 100% sure where they're going yet. It's one of those things we'll find out when the, when the units go in, so to speak. So that's this basically, that's in here done as far as we're aware, isn't it? That's all this in. Yeah, so the 2.5's in. For the hand the wash is it, hand we do wash all the wiring on. for the hand wash. Yeah, the hand that's wash is in. in, yeah. So we've got a 2.5 radial for the hand wash, all right. Yeah. But it doesn't mind me, actually, we've got to put a light fitting out here, haven't we? Yes, we, we do. We need to put one of, um, in there. We can take a permanent feed to that and just put it on a PIR outside or something. Yeah. We'll take a switch wire from here um, and we'll just put it on the other side of the door. Easy. We've had to, uh, the, the fuse, it's a long story, but the fuse board is more or less on the other side downstairs behind this wall. So we had to drill, we had to drill a hole here to fish some wires through. But while we were doing that, this is one of the old lead pipes, which I think were quite favourable during the wartime and stuff, because obviously they didn't have set measurements and stuff. But, um, and they've got, they've got a 15 mil copper pipe here, which I don't know how they've done this. They've, they've taken a 15 mil pipe, and I'm assuming this used to be standard uh, practice. I, I mean, I'm not a plumber, I don't know. But they've taken a 15 mil pipe and it's, I don't know how they've done that. They've just kind of, I really don't know. But if any plumbers know how they've done this, I'd, I'd really, because what is this thing? It's like a lead. They've just used a, I don't know. And what I want the answer to is what happens if this brings a leak? It's in such an awkward location. If, you know, if you've got a leak there somewhere, for instance, how, how do you fix this? How would you, I don't even know how you'd manage that. I mean, on stuff like this, the newer stuff, if it brings a leak, it's easy enough. You just undo the nuts take the pipe out, put a new piece in. But on stuff like this, I mean, that's surely a major job to start patching that up or putting a new piece of pipe in. But if any plumbers are uh, watching, you know the answer to that, leave it in the comments below. That was the other thing. Somebody was asking about these uh, cable stands. Uh, are they any good or not? Don't buy them because they are absolute, they're just, they're total tut. I, I just, I've never found one that, that does the job it's supposed to do. And I'm going to demonstrate why. So these are the this is the cable horse in question, right? And these are, these are you know, very good bits of kit and they're all, you know, they're a similar sort of price. They're about sort of 20, 25 quid a pop. And they're very good. Once the cable, once the stand is like this, it's, the bar is locked in and you can't remove the drum from the horse. So it's a great idea. But if you've got to put another drum of cable onto this stand, I'll demonstrate the problem. So this bar is locked in and most of them now, uh, you know, they're all similar to this. So the idea is when you pull it, this doesn't fly off the, off the top of the horse. So to lift it, you just lift it up like this, which automatically is, I mean, that's, all, we're going, that's automatically an issue because if you've got a big heavy drum of 10 mil, you can't, I mean, that on its own you can't do. But anyway, you lift this up with a lot of fidgeting around, okay? Now bear in mind, this is only a little drum of one mil, but if you've got like a 100 meters of six mil on here, this is a really hard thing to do. So I've got a fresh drum of 2.5 here. How are you supposed to get how are you supposed to get this on without removing the bar? I don't, someone hasn't thought that through. Because if you imagine, it just the, the whole thing just hasn't been thought through, you know? So if anybody out there knows of a better uh, of a better cable horse put it in the comments box below, because every horse I've had all suffer from this issue. Once you've got cables on the drum, if you've got a drum of 10 mil here, you can't add on with, you can't do it with one hand, you know? All right, everybody, it's five o'clock. We're, it's actually just gone five, but we're more or less done here for today. So all of our cabling here is now in. So our first fix is now, well, the upstairs first fix is now finished. So we're gonna load our tools up and we will see you in the van shortly. That wasn't a bad day's work. I'm quite pleased with that. Not at all, it was quite good actually. That was a good output. I was happy with that. Me too. Baking Stick them there. We'll take this all out. This one will go out tomorrow. This can go inside. Cool. That is all we've got time for everybody. So if you want to subscribe to this channel, you'll be clicking in this corner. If you want to watch another video, you want to click up this corner. Patron down here. And comments down here. Awesome. See you next week, everybody. Take care.